Hey, Zach here with EC Master. Today we're gonna to show you how to connect a boost control solenoid. Um, if you're not familiar with how turbochargers work, I'm gonna give you a quick diagram here. So you got two sides on a turbocharger. You got the hot side, we call it cold side generally. Um, so this is where your exhaust is gonna go in and out. So you got a flange here, um, comes from the engine. Outlet on the back where your exhaust goes out to the rear of the car. Uh, this is a compressor side. You've got the inlet, this is where your air filter or air inlet goes and compressed side out to the engine. So the turbo is driven by compressed gas um, or you know, waste gas is coming out of the engine. And the way we regulate the amount of air pressure being fed into the engine is by diverting exhaust gases somewhere other than the turbocharger. Uh, on a factory setup, you're gonna have an exhaust housing that has what we call an internal wastegate, has a flapper door inside that bypasses exhaust gases past the turbine wheel, which drives the compressor wheel. You're gonna divert the exhaust gases past that and just dump them right back before the downpipe. So here we have an external wastegate. So with an external wastegate, you've got a valve in the bottom. Um, let's see if I can do this. So you're gonna use pressure on a diaphragm in here that actually opens that valve and diverts gases past the turbo just straight out. So um, anyway, two different ways of doing the same thing. We're gonna show you how to plumb up an external wastegate. This one's a little bit more complex because we have to put a T in. Um, internal is simpler. With your boost control solenoid, if you buy one of ours, you get a diagram that shows you the plumbing and routing for it. Um, just a quick picture with the diagram of the ports. Uh, they are numbered. If you look at the actual solenoid, there are numbers cast in here um, to identify the ports. Pardon the dirt, this came off one of my personal cars uh, when we switched to a different setup. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna route it. So this is the compressor side of the turbo. When you're in boost, there's pressure here in the compressor housing. So we're gonna use that as a pressure source. So I'm looking at my diagram here and for an external wastegate, port one gets a filter. This is centered bronze filter just to keep dirt out of the valve. Um, not wildly critical, but long-term, just keeping junk out of there is great. Um, Cause you can see how dirty this gets in application. Uh, Two goes to the top of the wastegate, so we'll route that one now. So when you're looking at the wastegate, you've got your top and bottom. This is the bottom, so that on the side of the diaphragm, this is the top of the diaphragm. So we're gonna go to the top of the wastegate for port two. So I'm just gonna measure my length here, cut my hose to length. So top of the wastegate. And that goes to port two, which is on the side here. And we're gonna put a T in because on port three, we're going both to the side of the wastegate or the bottom of the wastegate and our pressure source here. So I'm gonna measure my length here. I'm gonna put the T right about here. So one piece of hose from here to here. Our T to the pressure source on the turbo. And from the T to the solenoid and also to the side of the wastegate. And orientation on the T doesn't matter, right? It's just a common junction for all these connections. So it doesn't matter if where they are on the T because they're all connected and the air is gonna go where it needs to go. All right, so just to recap, that's port two goes to the top of the wastegate. Verify that routing. Port three gets shared between the side or bottom of the wastegate and the pressure source. So as we actuate this valve, it's actually gonna change the pressure to the top and bottom of the wastegate to allow us to regulate boost. Um, when you're routing hoses for your wastegate, please, 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 please never route them anywhere near heat. Uh, I know that's difficult the way most wastegates are packaged. They're gonna have these running next to exhaust components. I've seen guys run stainless braided lines thinking that's better. It's not um, because inside that stainless sheathing, you've just got rubber or um, Teflon 
which melts just like plastic and rubber do. Um, so the most critical, critical thing is to route these away from heat. If they're going to be close to heat, wrap them, but make sure there's an air gap between those lines and the heat source. I mean, you, you, cannot, uh, you cannot have these laying against the downpipe getting melted um, because then you just can't control boost at all. So, you know, luckily there's, there's fail-safe protections, but I'll ruin your race day because once they fail, then they're also somewhere very hot and you got to wait a half hour, an hour for the car to cool down so you can start digging down there and getting burned and fix it. So be very careful, route them away from heat. I always use a zip tie. Um, if I'm using rubber or silicone vacuum lines, I really like these. These are from Thomas and Betts or TNB. They have a stainless steel tang, so it's not just a little nylon tang in there. So when you tighten these, it's, it's really, really silky. You get a lot of clicks and you can put some tension on there. It helps keep that nice and tight and take your flush cuts. Just cut it off flush there. So when you're reaching down here, you're not going to gouge your finger or get sliced open, but you really almost can't remove that hose. I mean, there's really no amount of pressure without bursting the line that's gonna pull that off versus just sticking it on. Um, Cause these will get more flexible with a little bit of heat. Um, anyway, that's the routing. We're gonna do another video and show you in the car how to do the software setup and tuning of boost control, but that's the actual plumbing. Um, I usually like to use aluminum tees rather than plastic. You can get these cheap ones at the parts store, but if you can get a metal one, get a metal one. Uh, make sure you mount the solenoid somewhere not super hot. And then the wiring is very easy for the solenoid. It doesn't matter which one you connect, but one wire gets a switch 12 volt source and the other side is controlled by the ECU. The ECU controls it by connecting it to ground or closing the circuit to ground. Um, so again, switch 12 volts on one pin. The other pin goes to the output channel that you assign on the ECU. And then use your output test feature. Make sure it's cycling. You'll hear it clicking when you cycle it and you can start tuning. All right, so we just finished showing you how to plumb up an external wastegate in the most common fashion. Um, alternatively, you can control it just like an internal wastegate. With an internal wastegate, um, they're very simple. Usually on an internal wastegate diaphragm, it's a similar deal, but you only get to put pressure to one side, and that's the side that opens the wastegate. So uh, on an external wastegate, that's the side or bottom side. You have a, a diaphragm in here, which is basically a big rubber balloon almost, right? Except it's not stretchy. When you apply pressure, to the underside of it, it opens the wastegate. When you apply pressure to the top side, it helps hold it closed. But on an external, excuse me, internal wastegate, um, you only have the one side to control generally. So um, you can also just control one side of an external wastegate. We're gonna show you how to plumb that now. So if you look here, we've moved our fittings around. On port three, we've got our centered bronze uh, filter, and we just put some straight fittings on ports one and two. Um, when the, the solenoid is not active, you can actually just you can hear the air going through there. Full pressure is going through that. So without activating this solenoid, it's going to see all the boost pressure that this is making. And that's, we call that just running off spring pressure, right? So we're not um, increasing the amount of boost because we're applying the maximum airflow or air pressure as possible to open the wastegate. Um, when you want to increase boost, when you trigger the solenoid, it's actually going to relieve pressure through the centered bronze filter which reduces the pressure seen by the wastegate, which raises your effective boost level. Um, so the way you plumb that is quite simple. We're gonna look at our diagram again here. We've got our centered bronze filter on port three. Port one's gonna go to our boost pressure source, still connected to our turbo. We connected that already. A little spit on that. Slide that on here. Don't forget your zip tie when you're done. And then quite simply the other side goes to the side to the bottom of the wastegate. When I say side or bottom, it's the same thing. Some people call it the side, some people call it the bottom, uh, but that's it.